All right, so today we are checking out some of Onyx 6S 1300 medium LiPos. This one is going to be their classic green series LiPo, basically Ovonix budget line product that is meant for FPV beginners. Ovonix did provide these LiPos for us to try out, but instead of just telling you my thoughts about them and are they worth it or not or whatsoever, I wanted to use this opportunity to show a complete FPV beginner how to correctly charge a LiPo battery from scratch. This is going to be a detailed walkthrough. So if you are a veteran pilot that already knows how this works and just wanted to know my thoughts about these LiPos, just feel free to jump ahead using the timestamp to the flight tests. All right, so without further ado, let's basically get going. Okay, so first thing first, let's start by reading the light post together. It might not be the most exciting part, but this will be very helpful in the long run because always you will have to read the light post label in order to know what it is. So the first number you're going to see right here is going to be the 6S1P. This is probably the most important number that you needed to know. So basically, this means that there is six cells of each individual batteries connected in series as 6S. And 1P generally indicates that there is no cell connected in parallel. Simply put, serial connection increased the voltage, while parallel connection increased the capacity. So this, in this case, a 6-cell LiPo is also referred to as 6S. So you wanted to know that the LiPo you are having is a 6S LiPo. Next, let's look at the factory default voltage. So you can see that there's a 22.2 volts. Okay. So do note, this isn't your max charge voltage or minimum discharge voltage. That this is just a factory default. So for LiPo battery, the maximum charge voltage is generally always set to 4.2 volts per cell. So for a 6-cell LiPo, basically a 6S LiPo, your total max charge voltage would be 4.2 times 6 at 25.2. That's when you plug in it and the total readout because... When you connect it in serial, the voltage adds up, right? So basically you have more power and basically you get a 25.2 volts. But when you're charging this, the individual cell ch max charge voltage you need to set is going to be 4.2. So this rule applies to regular LiPo batteries. However, high volt LiPo batteries, basically HV LiPos, it's on the other hand. You will be able to charge these to 4.35 volts per cell. So basically just always check the label to identify which type of LiPo you have. So the rule of thumb is you can always undercharge a high volt LiPo, but you will not want to overcharge a regular LiPo because yeah, it's probably gonna go kaboom. Now let's move on to the watt hour. So you can see that there is a watt hour right here. This can be used to measure the capacity of the LiPo, but to keep things simple, we're just gonna be focusing on the more common capacity indicator, which is the 1300 milliamp, the big number right here. This figure basically tell you how much juice the battery has. The larger the number, the more capacity you are gonna be getting. So basically for these smaller like LiPos, reading this is gonna be easier than reading the watt hour. For like the 6S category drones, medium range that range that you wanted to get is going to be 1100 to about 1500 max I, I would say that's about probably about the correct range for like performance and the flight time like kind of ratio from at least for me okay so lastly let's just talk about the c rating you can see that the 100 c right here so this number indicates how fast your lipo can discharge its power so it have when so the higher the C rating, the faster the discharge rate. So 100 C rate is pretty standard and decent for FPV drone pilots. If you wanted to do freestyle, 100 C is like more than plenty for you to do it. Okay, so now that we have covered the labels, let's look at the plugs. So if you fly FPV, you're typically going to be encountering two types of plugs. The main plug, the main output plug, and the balance lead. So the main output plug is usually either an XD60 or an XD30 plug for FPV drone. So this is a XD60 plug, and this is going to be an XD30 plug. So bigger drones, smaller drones. And next, let's look at the balance lead, which you can think of the balance lead sort of as a data cable. It's going to inform the charger of the current voltage of each cell, allowing us to charge all the cells simultaneously while balancing them. And this is also sometimes you plug these in directly to charge, or you can also use these to power up certain stuff. So very, 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 very like basically this is a crucial cable that you don't want it to overlook as many lipo hazards are generally going to be caused by unbalanced cells. So this is super important. 
All right, so now that we have covered the LiPo labels and the exterior part of the stuff, now let's move on to charging them. So to charge your RC FPV LiPos, you are going to need a LiPo charger, which can sometimes look like this, or it can sometimes look like this. But regardless of which charger you decided to invest to, I would still suggest the, strongly suggest you invest into a smart charger with built-in safety functions. These charger might be slightly pricier, but they typically last a long time and are going to be future-proof. And most importantly, the safety functions are going to be able to help you prevent most of the lipo hazard situations so something that you probably want as a serious consider because these are going to be probably the best investment that you can make if you're going to be staying in the rc hobby so regardless of which charger you choose the setting when you are charging your lipos are going to be somewhat similar what i mean is the concept so basically in this video we will be using the ovonic x1 to complete the rest of the setup since it's all ovonic products so it fits the thing so talking about the ovonic x1 pro charger this smart charger is two is a two channel charger that will allow you to charge two batteries simultaneously it's also going to include a variety of built-in safety functions which is pretty standard around the board and this is going to be one of ovonic's flagship product i think this is the best charger that they have at the moment so Let's basically start this tutorial by plugging in this charger to power it up. So we're going to use the AC power function. That's, that's going to be the easiest. Okay. So since this video is mainly just to show you how to charge up lipos, we are not going to dig like very deep into this charger of the every function. I'm just going to run through the process. So you know if you have a separate charger, you know how to set it up when you're charging these lipos. So first thing first, let's bring in the lipo and you're going to always plug in the XT60 first. You can see that there's two channel separates. Plug in the XT60 right here and then plug in the balance lead. You will want to plug it in in the sequence because sometimes if you plug in this first, the XT60, when you plug it in, it might sometimes generate a spark. And that spark might accidentally kill one of the cells or something. So this is something that you should basically pay attention for the sequence. That's always a good habit. Talking back to the balance lead, as we were mentioning before, this acts like a data cable. It's going to be informed, informing the charger of the current voltage of each cell so it is crucial to ensure the charger detects each cell properly so let's go into the sub menu so you can see that you're seeing like six readouts right here so if you're missing one hey that's something wrong with this lipo because you're plugging in a 6s lipo you are going to see six readouts if you're missing one that's something that you should probably not be using at right away because if you have a dead cell and you continue to charge it, that dead cell is going to probably go hmm, somewhat kaboom or something. So just make sure this is something you're paying attention on. So since our LiPo is going to be a 6S LiPo and we are six, we are seeing six readouts, we can basically begin the charging process, like continue it. So regardless of the charger you have, so make sure you navigate the correct channel to exit the sub menu to set your data according to the specific LiPo battery you're using. So in this case, you can see that we basically get two channels. You have the A channel and the B channel. Next, what, what we're going to do next is we are basically going to be entering the setting. So you can just, let me just see if you can twist it a little bit so the glare doesn't poke in your eye. Okay, so let's press enter to go into the sub menu. So at the sub menu, you will have a lot of tasks and settings that you can set up this charger to do. So to select the task, we're gonna be using the charge function because you can always also use the balance charge function if you wanted to like complete balance yourselves. But since the charge function already includes the balance charge function at the end, so it's, it's going to balance charge this anyway. So when you have the balance lead plugged in, it's going to do balance charge it. So you can just select charge for this because I think this is what it's recommended for this charger to do. So for the balance function, I generally use it when I see like an even cell value and that's when I plug it in. So the charger is going to dedicate the balance function to, to like charge it. But this is just my habit. You can decide whatever you want it to do. All right, so next is going to be the battery type. So we know that this is going to be a LiPo battery, but let's just enter the menu to see like what other functions that we have. So you have high volt batteries, as I was mentioning previously, that has a higher charge voltage. The LiPo battery, Lion, Levi, and NIMH, can pronounce that. So basically, in general, Lehigh is going to be 4.35 volts max charge per cell, LiPo, and Lion 
are going to be 4.2 and these are the three light posts that you will probably run into the most so the target charge voltage you can see that when you select lipo battery it's already going to be indicating 4.2 volts which is going to be the max charge voltage that you want for a per cell and then the cell count automatically going to be detected as 6s so next let's talk about the charging current and this is probably the most important setup when you are charging a lipo so the safest charging current generally is going to be 1c and to calculate 1c of your lipo what you're going to have to do is going to be reading the lipo capacity and then you are going to be dividing by 1000 to give you the correct 1c value so you can see that this is in amps and this is in milliamps so that's why you're that's why you're dividing by a thousand so now since our lipo is going to be 1300 milliamps we are going to divide it by a thousand we will be getting 1.3 amps so that is going to be our 1c so you what you have to do is go all the way up and put it put it at 1.3 amps so 1.3 amps is basically going to be our 1c charging and 1c charging is going to be the safest because that is always recommended on most of the manufacturers because yeah, when you're charging it slow, it doesn't like overburden the electronics when it goes in. So, but if you wanted to speed things up a little bit, you could potentially adjust, you can potentially charge it to 2C or 3C or 5C, depends on like your how like rush you are. But for me, I personally like to charge it at 2C. And to calculate the correct 2C current is very simple as well. So you basically do the same math. You bring out the LiPo, 1300 divided by 1000, you get 1.3 amps, that is gonna be 1C, and 2C, you're just gonna time it two, so it's gonna be 2.6. And then it goes on and on. If you go three, three C just times three, so that's gonna be the exact same thing. So 1.3 times two is gonna be 2.6. So this is gonna be our 2C charging. All right, so once you have set everything up, you basically can come here and you can start the task okay so once you have hit the start charging function you can see that the charger is starting to operate and during the charging process it is essential to stay next to the charger to monitor if there's going to be any issue a small tip if you set your charging current under 2c or like under a, like even like higher like 3c or 4c and everything is plugged in correctly your lipo should not be hot so if it does something might be wrong it can be a little bit warm it's okay but it should not be like oh i touch it it's super hot that is something that is going to be you 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 either have a super high resistance or you are the lipo is just going to be dying or you have a dead cell so that's something that you should stop the charger like right away all right so basically this is going to take about half an hour for us to get it done let's basically stay with the charger for it to like complete the cycle Okay, so once the charging cycle has been complete, you can basically see that this is going to indicate that it is done. So then you're basically just going to be entering the sub menu and press the button again, and it's going to stop the charger. And what you have to do, unplug it. Okay, so since now we have fully charged up this LiPo, we can finally go on and give it a quick test flight. Let's get going. All right, so we're switching the scene to a parking lot right now. So basically I'm in the middle of a job. So kind of taking a break so at this time we're just going to test fly these lipo and i'm also going to be show like basically when i'm flying i'm also going to be just telling you what i feel about these yeah let's get going all right so the footage you're seeing right now is coming out from the gopro 11 it's a beautiful morning with the perfect weather for testing although we have a stick cam available down below i accidentally messed up the audio of the original clip so this was just going to be a voice over so right off the bat, these dipos are the ones you will probably want to use as your daily practice packs. They offer decent performance at an affordable price, allowing you to pull most of your freestyle tricks and like basically if you crash it, that's yeah, okay, I don't care about that too much, you're not going to break your bank. However, just don't expect them to have any standout features. The most unique of these dipos is that they are not unique. So they are going to be your daily, reliable Toyota and Honda cars and just don't expect them to drive like a GTR. So something that you wanted to know. And unless you are aiming for top speed or maximum thrust, I would say these dipoles should be good enough for most of us. At least for me, I'm not like a crazy freestyle pilot, so not that power hungry. This is going to be good for my daily practice pack. As for longevity, based on my experience, Ovonic lipos are generally pretty long lasting. 
I see friends and I personally have super puffed up and all organic lipos if they're just still performing seems to be okay that you can still get somewhat decent amount of like okay so that's not safe and that's not recommended but just to share with you that this is what I see so however I would say as an FPV pilot we usually damage these lipo by crashing them rather than just wearing them out so ultimately I would say the price the price will be the biggest determined factor as long as they are budget friendly and you can cycle them throughout frequently, they're just going to be fine, okay? So, I just don't need anything that is fancy when I'm just practicing or messing around for, for like basically nothing. No, not, not like a strong purpose. Now, let's talk about the flight time. With this capacity, I'm getting an average of about 3 minutes of flight time, which is pretty standard when you're carrying a GoPro on a 5-inch quad. So, unless you are doing long-range flights or hovering for extended period, Flight time shouldn't be a major concern. I would say this is like, it depends on how much you're punching now, how much you are actually doing those kind of crazy maneuvers. So even with the more expensive LiPo at the same capacity, the flight time, I doubt there's going to be much difference. So in summary, these Green Series LiPos are going to be solid for everyday use. So if you are looking for more power, like if you just think that these are just not good enough, Ovonic offers does offer premium options like an Orange series and the Rebel series, which have a higher discharge C rating and should be able to give you some extra performance. So kind of like upgrade your Toyota to Lexus, that type of like concept. So that's about my thoughts about these lipos, and yeah, the most unique point of these lipos is they are not unique. So if you are like to try them out, the links are gonna be down below. Any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below and please like and subscribe and stay tuned. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.